These guys are good. This is a whole different ball game. Only the best skateboarders in the whole world are gonna even be able to compete in it. It's really a strategy game, it's like chess. It's a challenge and it's nerve wracking. You're either gonna do it or you're not. It's all or nothing. to the Citizens Business Bank Arena in Ontario, California for the second stop of Street League Skateboarding's DC Pro Tour fueled by Monster Energy. It is insane in here right now. I am your host, Rob Deere, the creator of this magnificent new professional skateboarding contest that features the very best street skateboarders on the planet Earth. What makes this contest so unique and different? Many things. Number one, our course. We build a completely new, fully concrete skate plaza inside an arena at each stop. We break the course up into four sections. A technical section, a line section, a creative section, and the finale, the big section. But the most special thing about this contest, it's our ISX instant scoring format. Each guy gets seven tries, every try counts. So the stakes are so high on every single trick because these guys are all fighting it out for a $150,000 first prize. At our first stop, 15-year-old Nyjah Houston kickflip out the front side board slide on his final trick to win $150,000. This week, completely different. We saw the top three guys from the first contest not even qualify. But at Street League, we have a last chance qualifier. We give them one shot at the big section. Whoever wins it is back in the finals. And this week, that just happened to be last week's winner, Nyjah Houston. My good friend Steve Bear is with him right now. All right, we're here with Nyjah Houston, who just made it in the last chance qualifier. Nyjah, big spin front board. I feel like that's the trick that took you over the top. Were you nervous about landing that? No, nah, not really. I mean, that's always been a trick I'm really comfortable with. But on these flat rails, uh, it's pretty sketch. But I always feel comfortable with that trick, and I know it gets a high score. So it's just one of those moves where it's just like easy, but it gets good score. All right, man. Good luck in the finals, Nigel. We are getting set for stop two of Street League Skateboarding's DC Pro Tour, fueled by Monster Energy. But what I'd like to do is take a look back to where this whole concept originated. DC Shoes put up the original money to help me build the very first skate plaza in my hometown of Kettering, Ohio. The unique thing about this skate plaza is that it was the first time that anyone had ever taken the world's most famous skate spots, duplicated them, and put them in one location. Oh, first trick! Not only did DC help me developed the world's first skate plaza and put it in my hometown of Kettering, but they put up the money to throw a contest on the opening day that laid the foundation for what Street League is today. We had all the best there from Chris Cole and Terry Kennedy, Paul Rodriguez, Tommy Sandoval, but we also had an immense amount of local talent. One of those, a nine-year-old kid from Chicago, Illinois, Chaz Ortiz. He was gifted at an early age. We'll see how gifted he is today as we get set to watch him compete in the finals of Stop 2 of Street League Skateboarding's DC Pro Tour, fueled by Monster Energy. Street League Skateboarding, DC Pro Tour, fueled by Monster Energy. Brought to you by DC, skateboarding since 1994. And Monster Energy fueled by Monster Energy. Welcome back to Street League Skateboarding's DC Pro Tour fueled by Monster Energy. We're about to get on the way. Let's take a look at the finalists. In the seventh position, 15-year-old phenom, Nyjah Houston. Ryan Sheckler, who didn't make the finals in the first stop, is excited to be in the finals today. So is Chaz Ortiz, 16 years old, 90% consistency qualifying. Paul Rodriguez is always in the finals, and today is no exception. Qualifying in the third position, Chris Cole still looking for his first Street League skateboarding win. 
Greg Lutzka, a contest monster, qualifying second. I know he's hyped about that. And in the first position, Sean Malto did not miss a single trick in qualifying. We are getting set to go, but before that, let's take a look back at qualifying. A lot of big names did not make it in this finals, and one of our true stars blew an ankle out. Peter Ramondetta, who was the first guy there skating harder than anyone all weekend, landed awkward on his ankle, and that was it. He is out for the season. It's such a bummer to see such a good skater who's capable of actually winning the contest get hurt. Another big shocker this weekend in qualifying, Tori Pudwell, who placed third in the first event and who was absolutely killing practice, came up short and did not qualify. What's even more shocking than that is last week's second place finisher, Shane O'Neill, who seemed bulletproof in practice but couldn't put it together when it really mattered. When you're competing against the 24 best street skateboarders alive, it is really, really tough to qualify. That's why you see guys like Eric Costin, Mark Appleyard, and street superstars like Tommy Sandoval and TJ Ladd just not quite having the consistency to make the cut. Let's take a look at what makes Street League Skateboarding so unique, and that's its format. We divide the course into four sections. Seven skaters get seven attempts. They go one after another, and each time they do a trick, it is scored. Every trick counts. This creative section is gonna be a lot easier for these guys to skate. It is a bump to a handrail, so we can expect a lot of really, really technical skating here in this first section. You see that green light up there? That means Nigel first Houston First person up in the creative section is Nigel Houston, last week's winner. Yeah, I mean, he's still on cloud nine after winning 150,000. He expects to do it again. Wow, kick for back lift, first go. That's coming out the gate pretty strong. That's a clear indication of this obstacle is easier for these guys to skate, so they'll be trying much harder tricks. But I think there's gonna be a, two schools of thought here. There's gonna be people that are gonna come out the gate conservative, and some people are gonna go crazy. Yeah, I mean, you can see right here, Ryan Secco decided, I'm gonna play it safe, 4.3. Still not that far behind. It's not an incredibly easy trick, but I expect guys like Chaz Ortiz, and Sean Malto, and Sheckler to play that strategy. Kickflip front board should get him a little bit more than 4.3, maybe. Uh, yep, 4.5. The reality of it is, is these guys are so consistent, and everybody's strategy really is to make as many tricks in the beginning before you really start trying hard stuff. Paul Rodriguez is definitely one of the most, actually, he probably is the most technical skater in this seven right here, and that was switchback lip. So you see the difficulty level going much higher, and you can see five points. Yeah, instantly to the top. Chris Cole, now the front side board side again. Chris Cole, Paul Rodriguez, these guys, and Nigel Houston, they just skate on sort of a different level. Their average score is in the five range, where a lot of these guys are more in the, the low to mid four range. Again, Nose one side to start it off, save. Lutzka just happy to be in the finals and have a shot at the $150,000 right now. Here's probably the guy that skates the most strategic out of the set, Sean Alto. He does tricks. His, his go-to tricks are very hard, but the things that you can do every single try. Right there, he was trying to frontside cookie grind. Went to frontside nose side. He's probably not getting as many points as a frontside cookie grind, but he's so good, he stays on. He still gets points. And that's what these guys have to do. They have got to build up points. As you do think of it, how you with 180. The first seven guys have all scored. They all made their tricks. Yeah, these guys, all of them, are incredibly, incredibly consistent. Ryan Sheckler, no different. Big, big trucks out here right there. 4.4, Sheckler moving into the second position. Rob, Sean Malto had a perfect qualifier. Do you think we'll ever see a perfect final? I think it's possible. I think these guys are skating at an incredibly consistent rate, especially, you know, someone like Chaz Ortiz has a really good possibility, you know, and I think Chaz Ortiz, Sean Malto, these guys are gonna have to skate virtually flawless to, to be able to win one of these contests, because it's just the fact that, you know, Paul Rodriguez, Chris Cole, these guys, they do much harder tricks so they can afford to fall here. 
Well, we have a perfect finals going right now already. Chris Cole keeps it going with the perfect finals. Front side 360 all over off the bump. Scores a 4.8 and showing why him and P-Rod are right up at the top there. When you see every guy not miss a trick, what separates the men from the boys is, is the score. Pretty big front side 360 looks like a turkey. 5.4, big points for him, and that's one of his go-tos. Incredibly difficult, not many people do it. Well, actually, some people can do it. They just can't do it with the way, they just can't do it as consistent as Greg can. Yes, the same with Sean Malko's backside overcook line. Not many guys are willing to take the risk with a trick that difficult, and that's why he gets scored so much points for what seem to be more simple tricks for him. And here's a guy who virtually probably has every trick on him. Yeah. The big spin front board side is a perfect example of that. He starts off with a kick flip back lip and brings it into a big spin front board slide with the greatest of ease. He really, really has a limitless bag of tricks. Let's see what Ryan Sheckler has. Big spin front board, he's, he's got that trick on lock. I've seen a couple of guys do that as well. Does that does that affect their score doing the same tricks as some of the other guys? I don't think it affects the score, but it's it could be different depending on how it's done. Because Chaz just did a kickflip back look there, and we saw Nigel open up his open up this section with a kickflip back. And they did get the exact same score at the 4.9. And for the most part, the judges are going to read it very similar. Oh. First guy to fall in this opening section. Looks like he got a little wheel bite there. He got a little ahead of himself and just put it down and was way too heavy. Chris Cole is a heavy hitter here. I'm really surprised Chris Cole did not qualify higher than what he did considering he's been dominating contests for two years. Straight. Yeah, I think this format definitely puts a lot of pressure on all these guys. You miss one or two tricks and you can get in your head real quick and start overthinking and then you miss a third one. Now it's it's panic mode. Yeah, I think the key thing here is all these guys are, are friends. But the key thing for them to understand is if you see some guys doing harder tricks, stay on your course if that's your strategy. I think that's the way Alto works. He yeah. just stays on course, doesn't worry about what the other guys are doing. He just stays on course. Because you could look at that and I'll tell you what, if I look at that and just watch the guys a backside 360 lift the rail on a 5.8 and move that far ahead. You try a harder trick. I would start to panic. Exactly. You and know, then your strategy is blown. I mean, but the truth of the matter is, you got to hope that guys are falls later on in this contest so that you can win. Absolutely. Because if he doesn't, if he keeps up with that kind of trick selection, no one will be able to catch up to him. And they have to think about that. Chaz Ortiz with a nice backside trip again. Completely flawless. But what's separating them right now? Three points because of Houston's difficulty in average landed score. There you go. Paul Rodriguez flawless this time with the Nolly frontside board side. As you can see by what's indicated in green, that means Chris Cole's up. The gray means Greg Lutzka is up next, right after the, whoa, Ollie 180 to switch feeble grind, 6.1, the highest score of this section so far. I mean, this is Chris Cole's go-to trick. We saw him get one of the highest scores of the league at a 7.5 last week in Phoenix, and that is an incredibly, incredibly difficult trick. Greg Lutzka, whoa! Front side 360 to back side nose blunt just like that. He is tied for first place with Nigel Houston. Incredibly, incredibly difficult trick. Gets him a 6.6, the highest score trick of this section. As you can see, there's a white dot next to Sean Malto's name. That indicates that he is the only person in this section who hasn't gone. He just got a 4.4 for the Nolly 5 0 grind. You know, a more fundamental trick. And and he's sticking with his strategy. And, and if, if Nyjah continues to do the difficult tricks, he, he's going to start to really fall behind. He's already almost four points behind. And it doesn't look like Nyjah oh, is even going to slow down slightly. A backside nose point slide, putting a lot of pressure on the rest of the field right now. So far, Nyjah has no bails. 
but neither does Malto. And I think Malto's being smart and sticking to his strategy. Oh, Sheckler's first goal. I think Ryan, Chaz, Malto, they know they cannot afford to fall. Wow, kicks a front side key, man. I don't see that too often. I don't think I saw it once the last contest. Yeah, 5.6. You know, I like what he's doing here. He's, he landed his first four tricks, and then he went for a really difficult trick, and, and it paid off. He moved all the way up to second place. Let's see what P-Rod has. Dolly front female, nice. That should get him some good points. 5.5. This particular contest, P-Rod seems a lot more sound and solid, and, and I think for him, he knows uh, you're not going to win or lose it in the first section. You just got to be there in the end. Oh, that's unexpected. Front side half cap for Bale. He didn't even, looks like he didn't hit his tail there. Now, is that bump a little too mellow, a little too steep? What do you think, Rob? I don't think it's that. I think it's just the reality of you're going to miss five. I mean, much like Greg Lutzka right there. I mean, falling at this point, when you're watching all these guys land trick after trick, it starts to get a little bit scary. The pressure really starts to set in if you get a couple bales going. This is a guy, though, that knows no pressure. Sean Malto is probably the coolest under pressure skater that I've ever seen. Yeah, you can tell that it, he's just going there to land tricks. And if he bails, it's so unexpected that he shakes it off and doesn't think twice about it. It's definitely not a Midwest thing, because Sean Malto's hometown and my hometown are about two and a half hours away. I'm nervous as all can be in a situation like this. And he's as cool as a cucumber. Well, it is It is true. You should be getting really nervous with $150,000 on the line. Wow. Big Cavalera backside lip side from Ryan Schreckler, 6.1. That's absolutely one of my favorite tricks I mean, he ever. does it so well. I mean, that is absolutely textbook. Cavalera backside lip slide. Big points, moving him up the leaderboard. He's all the way into second place. Chaz Ortiz. Backside 360 over the bottom. Continuing his flawless streak. Just barely behind Nyjah Houston with Malto, Lutzka, Cole, and Paul Rodriguez left to go in this round. Paul Rodriguez is certainly no stranger to take I know we've said that before. He certainly hasn't showed it yet, but there we go. Speak of the technical devil. 5.7 for a switch backside tail. A trick you will not see anyone else even attempt in this contest. No, because that is that that's a trick that you can easily, as soon as you hit your tail on that rail, you can loop out so easy, hit your chin on the ground. Oh. Wow. Very unusual. Yeah, I, 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 I don't that. understand the strategy in that. I, I don't either. I've never even seen Chris try that during practice. It seemed like he was joking around a little bit more than anything. Yeah, please the crowd or yeah. something. That, that doesn't make sense. I hope it's nerves or, or what the overall strategy of taking unnecessary risk for a trick that wouldn't even really reward him. Malta <laughs> hanging on to that backside nose one side. Here he is. He's just sticking to the script right now. He has not bailed yet, Malta. Well, we are here in the final attempt of the first section. Nyja Houston, Nolly Crooked Grind. Way to close it out. Flawless, seven for seven, with a 4.2, giving him a 32.7. It is a very high score in the creative section. Sheckler, finishing strong. Hit flip back, lip slide moves him into the second position for the time. Chaz Ortiz, who's yet to fall. Oh. Kickflip back, Smith, wow. Taking some risk, 5.9, I mean, 34.2. That is one of the highest scored creative sections of all time. He's got a perfect streak going on. Nice, switch heel flip by Paul Rodriguez. Jumps in all the way up to third place with a 29.6, keeping himself right up there next to the leader. This pull on his final attempt. That was a scare walk. Rob, I haven't seen one of those in a long time. 
A 3.3, not moving much on the board, still putting him in seventh position. Ray Lutzka, front side big spin for his final trip. A 4.7 moves him all the way to third place. Our final skater of the first section, our first place qualifier, Sean Malto. Wow, oh, hard flip, bringing the heat with a hard flip. And with a 4.8, Sean Malto into third place. But our leader after the creative section, Chaz Ortiz with a 34.2. We will be right back. Welcome back to Street League Skateboarding's DC Pro Tour fueled by Monster Energy. We had an exciting first section and our leader, Chaz Ortiz. A combination of consistency and really difficult tricks with a 34.2 puts him in the first place position after one section. Steve, we had an incredible first section. We had three guys that were flawless. That's right, Rob. Joining Chaz Ortiz is Nigel Houston and Sean Malto, both of these guys with 100% consistency. Nigel came out with Nolly, Crooked Grind, some of the more basic tricks, but the thing that put him over the top of Malto was this 270 to lip slide down the rail. Sean Malto still has not missed a trick this weekend. This hard flip has him sitting in third place after the first section. Greg Lutzka, First time in the final, scored the highest trick with this frontside 360 ollie to backside nose blunt slide. He is currently sitting in the fourth place position. Let's learn more about Greg Glutzka in the Monster Energy Skater Profile. Growing up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, you know, I grew up playing ice hockey. I picked up a skateboard, uh, started skating in local skate parks, gave up hockey and pretty much got my first sponsor when I was 16. Moved to Southern California when I was 18, and you know, I'm 25 now, and um, skating in a stadium like this is just crazy. Both days, last, last contest, I missed up by one. So the first day I got seventh, they only took six. The next day I got second, they only took one. It's really a strategy game. It's like chess in a way. You know, you really gotta pay attention to what everyone else is doing and be on top of it and land your tricks. That's what it comes down to, the guy who's most consistent you know, with the hard tricks is going to win the 150 grand, you know, and it's not even just about the money, it's just about doing it for the love of the sport and having your own style and going out there and having fun. And I mean, any money in skateboarding is free money because it's what you can do anyway. All right, who's ready to see? We are ready to go the on the line section. section. The line section is, is one of the more difficult of all four sections because you are required to do two tricks. If you bail either trick, you get a zero. So these guys have really got to choose their tricks wisely to make sure they land both. First up in the line section is Chris Cole. The reason he's first up is he's actually in last right now, seventh place. He's a full 10, 11 points behind Chad Ortiz right here. You bail three or four times, and you fall behind. 11 points has a lot to make up, but if anyone can do it, it's definitely Chris Cole. I believe he actually only failed twice in the, in the first section. But. And he really has the power tricks to really get the big scores. Ryan Schechter blunt slide the faking. And you'll notice as we get to the end of this, this big section has a big bump on it that is built for Ryan Schechter. So he knows he's got to stay close and try to really push it in the end there to make a big run. sketchy on that 5-0 there, and I didn't think he was going to be able to make it the second round when he pulled out a nose blunt, which I rarely see p rod do, actually. There's that frontside 270 lip that Greg has. 5.4 moving Greg Let's get into first place, and as you can see from the white dot, Ortiz, Susan, and Malto have yet to take their turn. Bob, who do you think has this section? Who do you think's really going to shine in this section? What is, you know, some of these guys are stronger than others in this section. Who do you think it's going to be? Well, I think Nija, for sure. He has very difficult tricks that he can do consistently. Both sections, this rail and this rail, as you can see from the big screen front board side, but Paul Rodriguez, both these guys. But the reality of it is, it's a difficult section. You've got to do two tricks. They're added together and split in half, so you can't do too easy of a trick on the top or else you're gonna get a really low score. 
I think this section though is going to belong to Chaz and Malta because clearly Chaz is doing hard enough tricks in the line to get pretty high scores. He's still in first. Chris Cole all over the back of the rail. Front side feeble grind. He front side grabbed off his 50-50 on the first rail. It's kind of unlike Cole because it doesn't seem very serious and usually he's a contest dominator and doesn't mess around. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't understand. Oh, Ryan Stecker could not afford to bail in those down. Switch frontside 5-0 from P-Rod to a switch backside 5-0. Now, remember, if you, if you remember last week, P-Rod had a little bit of trouble with the switch backside 5-0. Seems like he's been working on it. Indeed, and he's kept himself in a position. He looks a lot stronger this week, and he's right there in second place. Let's just go to trip again, the front side 270, the back whip down the rail. And any place you're going to put a rail, he's going to do it because he knows he's going to get some points for it because they are so difficult. I think in previous contests, Rob, he's been judged against the fact that he can do such a hard trick every try, but not here in the street league. It's judged a lot more fairly than the previous contests we've seen him still. Do. Yeah, we're judging on a trick by trick basis, not what the judges expect. From. Hip flip back, lip slide, moving Niger Houston into first place with Chaz Ortiz left to go. Feeble grind to 50-50. 5 -0, 180 out. And he has not missed the trick. 4.9, he's leading with 44.1. That's almost 13 points ahead of Chris Cole right now. Yeah, he's really gonna have to step it up. It's rare to see Chris Cole this far behind. Again, I hate to keep going back to that, but there must be something going on in Chris Cole's universe that's keeping him down there. Yeah, I can't call it. It's, it's definitely strange. But what is not strange is Ryan Sheffler doing trick after trick. Still, he is 5.5 points behind the leader. Yeah, Sheffler, this is a course that really seems to cater to him. And like you said before, when we get to the big section, he's I think that's where he's really going to show him. Oh. Switch cookie grind. Paul Rodriguez miss missing a switch cookie grind. That's something that I feel like he could do in his sleep with his eyes closed, with his hands tied behind his back. It's crazy. Second week in a row, we're watching Paul Rodriguez and Chris Cole struggle. Especially now with that trick. He knows. It's just so difficult. Nobody does it. He does it first try, every try, and he gets rewarded a 6.0. He's got to make that level of trick to stay in this thing because the tech section and the big section are his weaker sections. Again, Malto with the backside Smith and a front crook on the line section. He has done those tricks earlier before, but he's sticking to his game plan. He really looks like he has a game plan. I believe he's like the only one that I, I feel has a game plan. But it's like, how can you say that when Niza Houston hasn't missed a trick? Chad Ortiz still has not missed a trick. And right there, perfect example of pure strategy, a perfect grind to fake you. He knows Houston hasn't fallen, he knows Malto hasn't fallen, and he doesn't want to fall either because he knows $150,000 is on the line. Chris Cole has fallen a little too much and more than I've ever really seen. I've never seen him fall this way. It certainly does not make sense. Definitely. I believe he's the first one to flip down the stairs right now in this session. This set of stairs is a lot longer than the previous contest. It was about eight foot long. This one is 10 foot long. So it's going to be a lot less flipping on this guy because it's a, it's a further distance to clear. Oh, Rodriguez not to switch back lift. Got that switch cooking right up there in the first. It is, it is certainly a trick that only other person that does it is Chris Cole. And he's rewarded for it each time, but, but right now the falls are just hurting him. He's still sitting in fifth place with four guys to go. I just don't believe despite sitting in third place, that Greg can afford to bail in this section. He skated with the lowest average ever in the tech section of qualifying. And the big section is extremely difficult. If he doesn't load up the points on this section, it's, it's going to be tough for him to be there in the end. Malto keeping it up with 100% last go. Oh, the first Niger. ball from Niger Houston. Here's the thing about it. When you're watching Malto and Ortiz not bail anything, you 
bail one time and you start to feel the pressure. Yeah, it's keeping it 100%. So now Malto and Chaz are the only two at 100%. Houston with one fall. Lutzka with two falls. Yeah, it's looking like it's going to be the first guy to really fall. Oh, it's Chris Cole's backside piece of the lift line. 5.2, a big score for the line section. We're not used to seeing him bail, period. So it's he's got a long way to go and a lot of points to make up. Oh, check the two. When you're sitting back in that sixth position, you don't, you can't bail. You've got to land your stuff. Man. Absolutely, and when you flip your board, there's a bigger chance of bailing. So my suggestion to Shepard would have been to not flip your board this time around. Ooh, those are on tap, but it's definitely 3.2. You know, if you're gonna try a trick, you still get your points for making it, but if you try a nose ground and set your truck down, you're gonna get a much lower score. Oh. Bailed it again. Greg Lutzik cannot afford that. Uh, I think he should have moved on to another trick once he didn't make it the first time. I think the same way we saw Shane O'Neill in qualification got stuck on that switch flip, missed four in a row, and virtually just put himself right out of the contest. These guys are so used to making it first try that they don't expect to bail it. And with the way that everyone's skating, you literally cannot fall. Right there, the fight point once. He's still right there with Marco Houston and Keys. And you just got to hope that either of these guys fall. Absolutely, but even if they don't, he has the bag of tricks and gets high enough scores that even if Malta stays conservative, he might be able to catch up over time. It's tough. He, Ortiz right there, 360 flip, kick flip, back lift. He just continues to kind of separate himself from everybody else. There's the crowd loser. There it is. Listen to the crowd. The crowd is going to go crazy. They're going to boo again. <laughs> you know, the 4.2, they're booing again. I'm surprised they gave him that high in this game. Yeah, that one was pretty tough because he did it over the block. You know, that's that's not easy. But those judges are tough. They really, really are. Fairly shucks. Yeah, I mean, the cat back lift, it would have been huge. He went for it, took a risk. He knew he was trailing behind. He was all the way in seventh place right now. He went for it. And with risk is reward, but if not, you get a zero and you paid the price. P Rod didn't pay the price right there. P Rod is keeping it smart. I think he's getting his bearings back together. He's coming up with a better strategy. We're only midway through, so you can see P Rod. I mean, he's in fourth right now. Dave Lutz got kick flip front board slide. He's got a high average score, but those two falls are really going to come back to haunt him. That's why he's sitting in, in fifth place now. Malta, the most strategic skater here. Just staying on the course. Just staying on the course right here. Nolly backside nose grind and nose, and nose grind on the other. You can see by his average score, he was in the 4.5 range. Niger is skating at fives, five threes, five oh, just doing much more difficult stuff. Ooh, hanging on to the fakey 5-0 grind. Yeah, he was going a little slow, popped onto the ledge, knew he wasn't going to make it to the end, so he popped out in the middle and made it. 4.1, keeping him right there with the leaders. Big risk with the big one. That tail the round bar. I with mean, his board backwards. He did a backside tail slide on the nose of his board. Here we go, the final attempts of the line section. Chris Cole has a lot of ground to make up at the halfway point. Oh, man. These bales are just costly. 17.5 points behind the leader. That is a lot of ground to make up. Checklist sitting in the same position. Final attempt, Cataria back lift. I mean, a big move, he needed to do it. 5.9 is still 13.3 behind the leader. He's gonna have to continue to push himself and and really hope to land some big tricks in the technical section to make up ground for, for the big section. He definitely has the ability to do it. All these guys have the ability to catch up with one another on any given day, that's for sure. And Paul, again, looks like he's trying to play the strategy game with the 4.3 with an easier line, but just not really making up any ground to chase down, you know, Ortiz, Malto, and Houston. Yeah, these guys, the leaders really need to bail if anyone below fourth place wants to catch up. Third bail. 
on the big spin front side board stuff. But here's a guy who doesn't bail. Sean Malto has not bailed once. Frontside 5-0, backside Smith. This is why he's in second place. Not only did he land all seven in the creative, combined with the two tricks in the line, that's 21 in a row. Nice Houston. Step in. Oh. oh man. Looks like he was going for a switch frontside heel big spin down the stair and just couldn't step on the board. What a tragic way to bail a trick, just simply misstepping off a push. That it could be the difference between first and fourth. Chaz Ortiz again, just like Sean Malto, he is flawless. 21 tricks combined with the two in the line section. This is an unbelievable performance. He has led the whole way through. He is going to be really tough to beat, but Sean Malto has not missed a trick either. And right now, this is looking like a two-man battle between these guys. Don't go anywhere. Next up, the technical section. Welcome back to Street League Skateboarding's DC Pro Tour, fueled by Monster Energy. We are halfway through the contest, and that young man right there, Chaz Ortiz, has been leading the entire contest. He has not missed a single trick thus far, and really, he is the man to beat at this point. He is feeling it, and right now, he is leaving everybody in the rear view mirror except for one guy. That one guy, Sean Malto. Just like Chaz, Sean has not missed a single trick, and this is literally a head-to-head -head battle. It's not easy to do this. That's 21 different tricks, including the two tricks in the line, and for not one little thing to go wrong through all of that is pretty remarkable. But more than anything, it says how good that these guys really are. Paul Rodriguez finished third in the line section, and his strongest section is coming up next, the tech section. He could make up a lot of ground on these leaders because he is, like we've said before, one of the most, if not the most, technical skater in all of skateboarding. And despite sitting in fourth place, you can never count him out. He has the tricks to gain a lot of points really quick. Let's take a look at our current standings. In first place, it's Chaz Ortiz. Couple guys at the bottom, Ryan Sheckler and Chris Cole, got a lot of ground to make up, but they are both incredibly talented in the street league skateboarding. Anything can happen. Here we got the technical section. These are two flat bars that kind of go from low to high with a bench in the middle. The unique thing about this bench is there's actually a bench below it. So every time you do a trick, you're gonna have to do it over the bench that's sitting under the top of the middle bench. Yeah, that makes it way more difficult. You just can't get on and, and grind for a foot or two. You gotta go end to end. Like Chris Cole with the blunt slide. 4.0, still 17.3 points behind. He's really gotta make a move in this section. Checker with the front side nose grind up and out of that flat bar. I, that's the thing about this bench, you do have to go end to end. You cannot grind just a little bit, you can't even grind half of it. You have to grind from end to end or yeah. you're not getting any points. The thing about this technical section, it's gonna be really hard for these guys to make up a lot of points that don't have really sound ledge game like Paul Rodriguez. Yeah, Paul's definitely got one of the tightest ledge games in the business. Now he took a grind up that ledge, 4.6, much more difficult than what a lot of these guys are doing. They've just sort of had to dumb it down because this obstacle is so hard to skate. Switch tail slide, he's going really slow. 3.7, I, I think you're going to start to see some guys get exposed here that are going to make it really tough for them to be there in the end. And, Oh, he's no, he's not. You're going to see a lot of guys probably not flip their board in this section. They're going to stay safe. Which ultimately plays into Sean Malto's strategy. If there's nobody doing the really difficult tricks, put pressure on him, he can maintain the strategy of, of doing all these go-tos and not bailing. Yeah, I mean, no one's going to come out with a big hammer on one of these benches and, 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 shoot, and create a chasm bigger than it already is. Right. Chaz Ortiz getting a 2.9 is almost like a bail. It's the first time that, that Malto has been able to make up a little bit ground on him points-wise. You know, he's only three points behind him now. Side 
looks like, again, fundamental tricks going down. Incredibly difficult technical section. We're going to see low scores. That's a 3.9. Greg Glutzka in the qualification skated with a below a three average. It's a nollie tail slide on, on one of these up bars is just not getting it done. That's a 3.2. To at least stay in the fours to make up the type of ground, he's only going to watch himself drifting further and further away from the leader. Yeah, the more these guys take a chance, the, the, the bigger opportunity is for everyone else to kind of pull ahead because the chance of them bailing is pretty high, especially with the, the, the layout of the section. Yeah, it's really important to make the tricks, but it can't always be incredibly easy at the backside nose ground. You know, I just, he's got to realize he's starting to drift behind these guys, and, and he can't try that easy of a trick. It's just bad strategy. Frontside cookie grind right there with the frontside nose slide. Oh. Thought he was going to bail and he pulled it out to fake it. Well, he continues to stay flawless, but he definitely moves the ground with a 2.8. So that's what he's just. You know, these two guys have just not bailed, but if you look at the scores, Malto's conservative strategy has Paul Rodriguez right on his heels, only four points behind. Once I 180 to switch crooked grind, I mean, I promise you there's not another guy out there that's going to do that. 5.6. This is so hard. The board is going all the way up over and beyond the edge of the ledge, then going backwards on your back truck. One of the hardest tricks in skateboarding. That's a prime example of Cole taking a risk knowing he needs to make it to the ground. Yeah. A little combo trick there with Sheckler, one side to 5 0. He might get a little. A more points for that, 4.9, not bad on yeah, Not bad, but, but again, that's an easier combination trick because you're simply sort of turning back into 5 -0. Oh, Rob, does that count? That does count. It was very sketchy. He was all over the place, got a hand down, but as long as you maintain momentum and your body doesn't hit the ground, you get a score. But as you can see, he got a 3.4, which, which didn't do much for him compared to if he would have landed it. Fair enough. Paul Rodriguez going in switch. I feel like he was going to maybe nollie heel for part of that. That's, that's what I was hoping for. Yeah. I mean, it, it moves him into second place. I still feel with it with a trick of that simple in this section for how technical he can be. That's playing it really safe. He's got to hope that Ortiz or Malto bail. There's another one. I thought he was going to flip out of that. Yeah, I just... He's nine points behind. It's, this just isn't the time to be playing this safe. These guys are going to start start getting away from him. Malto is still 100%. 100% and, and a nollie cooker grind end to end across that over the bench is not easy. That's why he's still up in that four and a half point range. Backside tail side to fakey. I, I just have never imagined it would come to this where it is two guys who have not missed a trick this far into the contest. It's absolutely insane. Wow, this is another example of Chris Cole taking a chance. He had a 5.6 on the front side 180 over to switch crook on the bench, and now he does a half cap crook across the entire bench to backside 180. 5.3, he's making a move. Seven in place all the way up to, to fifth. Sheckler making a move there too. Ooh. Backside Smith grind, 5 0 to 180. That's because got to understand that he's trailing far behind to start taking some risk. I just, I don't understand that strategy. I don't either. The Nolly lift side up the bar just does not make sense to me, especially with uh, the caliber uh, by which Greg skates. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a warm up trick. I understand playing it safe, but there, there just comes to a point where you're hurting yourself, especially when you're as far behind as he is. Oh, I just, I just. Switch backside 5-0, I understand last week you had a little bit of trouble with that. Yeah. But, but this is his opportunity to make it up. Back, switch backside tail, shove it. 
Plus side, he'll flip out. Like, he's going to gain the points that could overtake these guys that are taking that consistent route. He's, he doesn't need to run that strategy right now. But exactly. He knows that Malto is going to probably land every single trick in this section. Yeah. So he's got to come up with something, and you can probably guess what the tricks are. Yeah. So yeah. he's got to come up with something to take Malto out, to take Ortiz out. Because Malto's not big. He's not. And Malto's still hoping that Ortiz bails, but the same way Rodriguez hopes one of those guys bail. And, and Houston really is just drifting behind these guys. Oh, oh man. <laughs> that, I mean, here's the thing that's going on with him right now. Yeah. Not only is he skating incredibly consistent, but he builds up, and at the end of each of these sections, he's taking a risk to do much harder tricks. A backside, tailside, big spin, is a big risk. Yeah, because if he bailed that, he jeopardizes his lead yeah. immensely. Chris Cole, I, 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 don't, I don't get this right here. That looked like he was joking around, yet he just laid down two of the hardest tricks in the section and could have brought himself back yeah. up in the top three or four spots. I, I don't get that. It's a 50-50 hand flip. It's fun, but it's, it's, I just don't understand why you would not keep pushing it and, and try to put some pressure on these guys and make a run up the board. I, I can't quite understand what's going on with them. Maybe he's sick of winning contests, Rob. <laughs> no way. That could be the case. Very just, you know, it's tough, it's tough man. It's, as you can see by the scores there on the bottom, they're, they're all in the threes. There, there's no one else in this, in this section skating in the threes. Now, do you think he's just shook? Do not count. Oh, oh. Can't that. That's Could sure. not afford that. Nice is in the threes three as well. It's just bad strategy. Well, I understand play it safe, but you have got to be able. Oh, yeah, that's a that's some chance right there. I think he's going to get 4.1. He hit his wheels. Got a little sketchy. Just couldn't quite get re rewarded for the risk that he took. But at least he did not get a zero. Yet, Malto has not bailed. Will he ever bail? It does not look like that. <laughs> it doesn't. It sure doesn't. Wow. Let's switch backside 5-0, end to end. Malto is keeping his head on his shoulders. But as you can see, Chaz is still ahead of him with a trick to go. With Dolly out, put Brian Dolly out to 5-0. He's in the lead regardless. Right now, he can afford to fall. Absolutely. He, he's got one. If they're going to go like this, if they're going to horse race this end-to-end, -end, neck and neck he's giving himself some breathing room by trying more difficult, more risky tricks. Yeah, that's the difference between the caliber of tricks between the two guys. He's almost an entire attempt ahead of Malta. Yeah. Switch tail slide by Chris Cole. I just don't understand the strategy. Nice frontside coach across the whole thing by Ryan. I actually never seen him really do that, do that very yeah. often. That jumped him all the way up into third. He's he's putting it together in the tech section right now. Yeah, I, which I did not see coming in any way, shape, or form. When I was yeah. thinking of him in the line section, I thought, okay, Sheckler is going to have a hard time in the tech section. That's too hard of a section for him. But the reality of this more difficult tech section plays to his style of skating. And he's making it down right now. There's a switch backside tail from P. Rod. Something that he, again, could do in his seat. I'd like to see him shove it out of that, get himself a little couple more points. Yeah, I think at this point. He was on it. I mean, he's look right at this. there. He, he also just can't afford to bail. He, he's got to go for something big here to try to close this gap going into the final section. Tough on Nigel, the winner last week, now sitting in fifth place with it bailing a switch frontside tail side. I believe he was probably going to heal for that. Yeah. Oh! Oh! That oh. was unexpected. Sean Malto's oh. go to trick, frontside oh. crooked grind, and he misses oh. it. Oh. His first bail while Chaz Ortiz puts another one at the bank, a 4.5. Oh. That right there, that single. Trick bail and a fake by Chaz put a 10 point separation. Chaz is running away with this right now. Chris Cole in his final attempt at nose grind, one foot. I gotta believe he's just 
he just he's just having fun at this point because he doesn't believe he's got a shot to chase these guys down. But you know what? He's in fourth place. He never won the big section. Oh, crucial day on it. Ryan would be right in this contest. He had a a bad day on the creative, one in the line and one here that, that has really put some distance between him and the leaders. There we go. It's been a tough section for Lutzko. He, he, he's really 100% out of this, but at least he closed it out with, with a big 5.1 trip. Paul really has to make this trip right here. This is, this is really, really important. Oh. See, he took a chance, though. He did. That chance didn't pay off. I've seen him do that many times before, but he did take a chance. He knew he needed to. He still sits in third, but Ortiz, Malta, or Houston, they just went. Yeah, but I'm not suggesting that they go too hard, but these guys have got to push it when they're falling behind. Sean Malto's final attempt. Sticking with his strategy. Yeah, he, he did not let that fall shake him. Look, there's his family, a bunch of blondes hey, in the family. You wanna know what? They love the strategy. They know, despite falling behind here, he, he's still in this. Chaz Ortiz, final trip of the tech section. No slide, big spin. I mean, he has not missed a trick through three sections. He is running away with this contest right now. We have one section left. Do not go anywhere. Welcome back to Street League Skateboarding's DC Pro Tour, fueled by Monster Energy. We are three quarters of the way through the contest, and the guys are all getting ready for the fourth and final section. Let's take a look back at what happened in the technical section. We knew the section was gonna be pretty difficult for the guys, and it was proved right. The average score for three of the guys was under a 4.0. The big news here is that Chaz Ortiz is still on top, doing tricks like a backside, tailside, big spin, not falling yet in this contest. Chaz Ortiz, 21 for 21. But the big story of the tech section, Sean Malto, after 19 in a row, finally bails one. Chris Cole actually gained a lot of ground in this section, scoring the highest with tricks like frontside 180, switch cook around across the entire bench. Ryan Sheckler surprised us all and put together a really, really strong technical section with tricks like this backside Smith grind 50180. But the true story of this contest, Chaz Ortiz has led the entire way, has yet to miss a trick, and is 11 points ahead of second place Sean Malto. But the thing about the big section is anything can happen. These guys can gain a lot of points and it's easy to fall. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Citizens Business Bank Arena in Ontario, California for the second stop of Street League Skateboarding's DC Pro Tour fueled by Monster Energy. We're through three sections now where we watched Sean Malto make every trick for two days till the tech section. Chaz Ortiz is completely flawless, but the thing about it, he is doing really hard tricks and he has built up a really, really big league. But this is street league skateboarding and every trick counts. So anything can happen in the big section because it's still anybody's contest. Anything can happen, but if Chaz Ortiz continues to skate the way he's skating, I don't see anybody being able to catch up with him. On the creative section, he did tricks like kickflip, backside, smith grind, hard and consistent. 360 flip to kickflip, backside, lip slide on the line section. This guy, hard tricks and consistent, and even in the tech section, usually his weak point. Backside, tail side from end to end to big spin out. Now it is time for the big section. Crowd, put your hands together because it is going to go down. Here we go, the final section, the big section. We have a giant ramp flying off the back of that ledge, and we got two really sketchy flat bars. We are about to see some very intense action. First up, Greg Lutzka just really, really fell behind the technical section. That's right, and he's a guy who 
normally skates much better than what he's displayed here today. I'm yeah. really surprised by his strategy, by his caliber of tricks that he's trying, and his skating in general. Yeah, we can see he really suffered because of Wow, rolling up the windows, Ryan Schechter, yeah, he knows it. That's a scary bar to skate. I, I can assure you, I've stood up on the edge of that thing, and, and that is an incredibly scary obstacle. Chris Cole, he just, that's his go-to. He doesn't ever miss that. He needed that momentum to kick it off to really make a run up this board, and, and I think that's really going to affect him. He uh, came out strong with the nose right down the hubba. But at this point, if you're going to go for the win, you, you've got to really kind of risk it and try to put together some really hard tricks. I, I think Nyjah Houston knows that more than anybody right now. Clearly he knows the big spin, front side, board slide, 6.1. That's what needs to be done here. If you're going to chase down Chaz Ortiz, the only way to do it is really hard tricks. And he, he's playing the right strategy. He knows what it's like to win, and that's what he's here to do. I'll just let him that big spin, front side, board spin face his strategy, though. No. He's Nolly 5 0 the hubba. He's sticking to the script. He's just, he needs Chaz Ortiz to play. Oh, my. Wow. Oh, <laughs> my. It's almost like he jinxed oh him right there. Oh, my. Rob. His first fall. He's opened the door right now. Yeah. He's really opened the door. I don't, you know. He's still almost, he's still six points ahead. That is very true, but I believe Malto's go to be at the backside. Those on the side, the overcooks are worth a lot of points. Checkers nose down, 4.8. Incredibly, incredibly sketchy bar to skate. I, I just, I could not explain to those of you that have never skateboarded. That's the Chris Paul I know. Yeah, you know, I'm just, just not used to seeing him fall around. We're used to watching him put it down, trick after trick. Sheckler is in third place. Remember when we were in the second section and saw him so far behind? Yeah. He's in third place. This is his section. Like I said, he had a couple crucial falls in each of the sections that if he didn't, if those didn't happen, he would be right here against Ortiz and Malta. Perfect switch here for my Nigel. This is, a, you know, Nigel has that ability to make the the hardest tricks and the biggest things look so easy. Not only that, but on the biggest stage. And Sean Walter all of those runs. He is not letting Five. go of his strategy. 5.0, I mean, he's within a point. Now, now the pressure's really on Chaz. He can't start falling. There, there you go. go. There you go. See, before Chaz was at a comfortable lead, he had Sean at a, a little bit of arm's length. He didn't have to take much of a chance. Now, he's one trick yeah. from yeah. being behind. Yeah, I mean, he has to. I, you know that's in the back of his head. Regardless of skating flawless up to that point, it, you still got to be thinking about it. Whoa! Whoa! That was massive. A massive kick hook. I feel like Sheckler's going to utilize that obstacle. I mean, that's without a doubt. He's, he's the only one that's even hit off of it so far, and that's where he's going to gain those points. And he, he's making a run at Malto right now at that 95. Absolutely. He's only three points behind Malto. Let's see what Paul has. A crooked run. Just sitting in that sixth position. That's going to bump you up, but it's still with guys to go like Houston, Malto, and Ortiz. You're still falling behind. Ooh. That was probably the scariest trick tried in this I, section thus you far. You just, all we talked about is you do not want to stick on that bar because you, it's a, it's a long way down. Ooh, Malto getting right on the edge. Yeah, he almost slipped off that nose run right there, but it's Malto. He doesn't bail. He does not bail. He has fallen one time the entire weekend, putting a lot of pressure on Chaz Ortiz. Oh, man. If Chaz would have fell right there, it would have been a whole different game. He tried oh. to kick flip. I don't know if he was going kick flip 50 50 or kick flip 5 0, but he didn't even remotely come close to getting his front shuffle. But at least he made it. You know, that would have been an absolutely catastrophic fall for him. 
Let's see what Sheckler has. It's a, it's a zero. You put your body on the ground, you're going to get a zero. I just don't understand it. Ryan Sheckler would be right there. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't know if he would. Even if he made that, well, I guess he would. He'd only be a couple more points behind. Yeah, but I, I'm looking back to a couple bails in the other sections that were tricks he could have made. Like, right. he really, really could have been right in there. Absolutely. Beautiful switch hit by Paul Rodriguez. Four points in third, puts him right above Shepard. These guys are jockeying for those that third and fourth position. That still is the difference between twenty-five and ten thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah, I mean, Six point four. Okay, that this is taking a risk in going for the win. This is the, about the sketchiest kick flip back right lip side anyone has ever done. That is unbelievable. He knows a thing about when, when the pressure is on, how to really put it down. And so does this guy. Backside when the pressure is on, he's he's not going to miss anything. You know, but I'm he's afraid. He's still staying some conservative. He's conservative. I, I don't know if that's going to do it for him in the end. You know, it may not. Chaz is. I mean, the way it's going right now, it's between Chaz and Malto. I don't see either of these guys bailing. One of them has to bail. Yeah, Chaz no, stays on top. But I don't know if Malto is going to, he's got to try harder tricks to overtake Chaz. Otherwise, Chaz will just run away with it with just landing on his board. Absolutely. This is the time when Malto actually has to put some Oh, God. Wow. 7.3. That is the highest score of the entire event. Look at this, man. I mean, this is flying right here. He's, he's 10 foot in the air right there. Picture perfect backside oh, 360. He doesn't even put his hands on the ground. I mean, yeah, you see Chaz showing respect. Everybody knows getting up that high is sketchy. Something wrong with Malto's hand right there? Man, I didn't see him fall, but maybe that's just nerves. Oh, oh, hanging on. Hanging on to a kick flip over the bar. I think Cole is the first person to do a trick over the bar. He is. You know, it, it is tough because you do land. You potentially run into that other section to knock you off your board real easily. Malta needs to do something a little bit harder to put some pressure on Chaz. Maybe get Chaz to do a little bit harder of a trick than that side. That's what he's got to do. That's what he has to do. They only have three tries left. At some point, he's got to take a risk. Big, 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 big spin here. Right now, it's a battle for third place between Nigel Houston and Ryan Shecker. These guys are going back and forth. You know, That's here's right. his opportunity. You know, hopefully someone's coaching him saying, look, kid, try something hard right now. Uh, the backside nose grind, I mean, a go-to for him, but still worth, yeah, a 5.5. I mean, that draws him within 0.8, keeping the pressure on Chaz. Chad's still staying consistent. But I, I just don't know if it's the right move. It's a, a low scoring trick. It's already put Molto within range of him. Molto has plenty of tricks in the five range. I just, he's got to understand that he just opened himself up right there. Molto can overtake him with a trick in this run right here. But the advantage is, is that Chaz still always has another try. He's still a try ahead. Yes, this is, this is true. Checker making a big run right now. Big backside flip. Oh, my. I mean, you know, no one else is even, is even flying off that. That's his third trick off of it. Again, there is a battle going on between Sheckler and Nyjah for that third position right now. And Chris Cole could easily be a part of that with a big trick here. Oh, I mean, that, that's it. If he lands that trick right there, he, he's, he's taking on both Houston and Sheckler for the third spot. Absolutely, but I would have liked to have seen him light up a lot earlier in this contest than right now. Yeah. Oh. That. Have you ever seen P-Rod do that? I mean, that's what makes that bar so scary. Oh, my God. I never even see him I didn't try see, that. He never jumped off at one time. He just blasted a nollie heel flip 180. Unbelievable. That's, that's what you got to do in this final section.
But here we go, Sean Malto and Chaz Ortiz trick for trick right now. He needs at least a 4.8 right here. There it is, backside Smith, 4.9. 4.9, that after this whole day, Sean Malto finally overtakes Chaz Ortiz. By a tenth of a point. I, I can't even believe that this was even able to happen. Tail slide to fake, he's playing it safe. Playing the strategy of 3.6 is gonna keep him ahead, but it's still, if Sean does a really hard trick, it's gonna put a lot of pressure on Chaz on his final trick. But even so, all he's gotta do is land it. All he's got to do is land it, yeah. and he stays ahead. He's got to skate smart right now. Yeah, it is a game of strategy. That which Ryan Sheckler is not playing, he keeps just going for it. Boom! Man, like, <laughs> hey, I, you got to respect it, you know? This is what Ryan Sheckler is built for right here. This is what he is all about. What an incredible performance, like, without a doubt, the most exciting performance in the big section. But you know, sitting in third place, all Nigel Houston has to do is land a trick and bump him down to fourth. But Chris Cole, if he lands something big here, he's going to overtake him as well. Oh! oh man. Backside 360 Ollie with a kick flip. He came out swinging right there. He really wanted third place. It's the reality of these guys feel the energy of the building and, and really want to do the hardest trick possible. That's just the nature of skateboarding. Paul right here still has an opportunity to overtake Cole for the fifth position. Big switch trade, but man, it's just a testament of Paul's day. You know, really, really going for it, but, but just not quite there today. But it's been a great performance. But here we go, Nigel Houston. He's got to play with some strategy here because he is fighting for that third position. Nolly Crooked Ground, that's guaranteeing him a third place finish with a 4.3. He's played it smart, he played it strategy, but here we go. Boy, here we, this. we go. There are two tricks left. Sean Malto and Chaz Ortiz. My hands are sweating. He has to make this to put the pressure on Chad Ortiz. And I am sure he has never been in a position like this in his life. Oh! oh, oh. 5.5 for the backside Ollie to Overbrooks. Oh my Woo! gosh. This Woo! is some pressure on Chaz Ortiz. But all he's got to do is a basic trick. He's got to kick foot the stairs. Dude, five all the home. One That's trip. That's it. Just That's one all trip. He's do. And he wins 150 grand. Here we go. Oh, oh no. no! Oh no! Oh my goodness! Chaz Ortiz goes for the crooked grind. Oh no! I don't even oh. think I've seen him try that in practice oh, all the entire goodness. weekend. since 1994 and Monster Energy fueled by Monster Energy and Bing Bing and Decide Ladies and gentlemen could we please congratulate both these guys first and second place I mean that was a nail biter in the purest sense the young man who came up short battled all day, bailed one trick on that, what was a backside Smith grind. You had one trick to do for $150,000. What happened? What happened? What happened? I don't know, man. It came down to me and Sean, and uh, it was close, but I mean, we're homies, you know? We both take trips together, but it was cool, you know? I mean, the reality of it is, is you killed it the entire day. You only missed one trick, and you did a lot of really hard tricks. So congratulations to Chaz Ortiz. 
but the man of the hour. Let's give it up for Sean Molto. Give it to this guy. He skated absolutely flawless in qualifying, did not miss one trick, did not miss any tricks till the tech section. What were you thinking when you knew you had to put pressure on him on that final trick? That was the most nervous I've ever been in my entire life. <laughs> I was talking to Chris up there and he was just like, stick to your game and uh, try to just get above him and put the pressure on him. After having that flawless qualifying, did you know you had a pretty good shot on this course of winning? I mean, it's so hit or miss. All these guys are the best in the whole world. So, you know, it's just one of those things. I was like, it's nervous coming into it. And uh, if Chaz didn't fall, I wouldn't be here. So, well, that's the name of the game. It is street league skateboarding where every trick counts. So, I would like to present you with your $150,000 credit card. Let's give it up for this guy. Let's give it up for this guy. What an exciting event. Sean Malto, Chaz Ortiz, head to head the entire time with Malto coming out on top on the very last trick. Congratulations to all our skaters. After two stops, Nigel Houston is on top with Sean Malto in second. Next week, stop number three, the final in the series, We'll see you in Las Vegas, Nevada.